Hi everyone, Pastor Jimmy at Mount Pleasant. Going to continue our study on Asa and his life and what we can learn from him. This will be video number four. We're going to look at his life lessons and how we can grow as we conclude this study on Asa and his life. We saw how Israel has been split into two nations. We saw how Asa was a king of one of the nations and how his ancestors, his father and those before him, had not followed the Lord. But we've seen how he rose up to the challenge and how he decided to follow the Lord. We also looked at the failures that he had by not listening to the, to the prophet of the Lord, by not seeking God's guidance and wisdom at times in his life, and also by not getting rid of all the idols in the land. So this video today, we're going to look at some lessons we can learn. And we're going to see how we can grow personally closer to God because of what we learn from Asa. One of the first things we can learn from him as we study his story uh, in the Bible is that family history can be overcome. The things in our lives that we say, well, I can't serve God because no one else in my family has, or look at the way I was brought up, or, or other excuses. We can overcome those. Asa shows this. Whatever our parentage is, whatever our circumstances are, those can be overcome through the help of God and through serving God. And by making a commitment to Him, we can overcome those things. So even people who are not raised in Christian homes in their adult lives come to know Jesus Christ, their Savior, they can still continue to go and serve God. I know there are many people who have made sacrifices by accepting Jesus Christ as their Savior and having their family disown them or not speak to them or do different things to them. We have to understand that just because those in our family do not serve Jesus Christ, that does not mean that we cannot serve Him in a mighty, mighty way the way that Asa has done. We also learn that we must stand on the side of the Lord. Not on the side of the world, not on the side of the people, but we must stand on the side of the Lord. We must do His will. He felt these, he, he saw his father do these things. He saw his father serve the people, give them their idols, give them their other places to worship. But Asa came in and said, no, we must worship God. We must worship the one true God. And he decided that he was going to stand on that side. I believe we have a problem in our churches today where we bow down to the world too much and we cave in to too many things that go against God's word. We must be like Asa and we must make a stand on God's word and on the truth. Not on what I think, not on my opinion, but on what God's word truly says, the truth of God and what he wants us to do. Not calling sin a sin is a problem and we need to make sure that we are standing on the side of the Lord today and not on the side of the world. We also learned that it's much better to trust in the Lord than it is a man. We saw how Asa had a problem and he went to the Lord with an invading um, nation coming in and the Lord was able to take care of that for him. Whenever another problem arose with the other nation of Israel, instead of going to the Lord again, Asa went to Syria, the king of Syria, and we saw that the Lord was not happy with that and the problems that came about. So we also can learn from him that it's better to trust in the Lord than it is in man. So what can you and I learn from this? How can you and I learn to grow closer to God by studying this man that's in the Bible? Well, the first thing that we can do is we can understand that he, his heart, his heart belonged to the Lord. So ask yourself this question today. Does your heart belong to the Lord? Or does your heart belong to one of the many idols that are in our world today? There are many things that we men serve instead of God today. Where is your heart? He understood that his heart had to be, be God's heart. He had to give his heart, his life over to God so that others could see that in him. Ask yourself this question today. Whom am I serving? Where is my heart at? Because wherever your heart is at, that is who or what you are serving today. The next thing we understand is that he sought the Lord and we need to seek God. There are nine different references of him seeking the Lord in the three chapters of the Bible that have Asa in them. There's nine different times that he found himself in situations where he was overwhelmed and he went to the Lord. You and I need to learn to do the same thing in our lives. We need to learn to seek the Lord and trust in Him. We need to be like many people in the Bible that says, God, wherever you are, I want to be. Wherever you go, I will go. I will trust in you, God. I will trust in you, Lord, and I'm going to seek you. Prayer was his strength, and prayer needs to be part of our strength. We see him praying to the Lord for help, and we see the Lord bringing that help to him. 
You and I need to understand today the power of prayer we have in our life and how it can help us and how we can turn our lives around to God through prayer. But it's not only just praying. It's also once we pray, we need to listen to the Lord. He will listen to the Lord. He continued to listen to God's instructions. Listen to Second Chronicles chapter 15. And when Asa heard these words in the prophecy of Obed the prophet, he took courage and removed the abominable idols of all the land of Judah and Benjamin. Notice that he removed the idols whenever the Lord spoke through his prophet. You and I can pray. You and I can do a lot of things, but if we don't listen to the Lord and we don't obey the Lord when He calls, then we will be failing in our service to the Lord. Which brings me to the next thing that we can learn, is that we will fail. There will be times when we will fail. Asa failed, but he never gave up. He always continued to serve the Lord. Even in his failures, he never gave up. You and I will fail, but here's the good news. God is there and He will forgive us when we do fail. So continue to strength, continue to go to Him for strength. So, if we had to just come up with one thing we can learn from Asa, what would it be? What would be that one little piece of information we can learn from him? If there was nothing else that we had to learn, we only can learn one thing, what would it be? Is this, you and I must learn to follow the Lord regardless of the world around us. You and I must push the world aside and we must learn to follow the world regardless, or follow God, regardless of the world around us, regardless of the things that are going on, regardless of how we were raised, regardless of who's around us and what they're saying, we must keep our eyes focused on God and we must stay, uh, keep our faith firm in Him and we must worship in Him and we must follow Him regardless of what we're being told by the world around us. So, what's keeping you from serving the Lord today? What are the things that are keeping you from serving? Asa had many things in his life that could have kept him from serving. But because of his dedication to the Lord, he was able to bring Israel to a point of great revival. And if you look, continue reading and you look at his son, you'll see how a great revival came about in Israel through his son because of the things that Asa had set up. So what are you doing today to serve the Lord in a world that really doesn't want you to serve the world? What is keeping you from serving him? Put all those things to the side and serve the Lord today.